And so the more you become Marian, the more you resemble Mary, the more you imitate Mary, the more you call upon Mary, the more time you spend with Mary, the more the Holy Spirit's gonna become alive in you. She's the perfect apostle. She's the perfect disciple. She's the perfect mother. When I give my life to the Virgin Mary and I become like Mary, I have Holy Spirit power to the maximum. And she ensures that the devil doesn't get in the way. Marian consecration is one of the greatest gifts that Jesus can give us. In the lives of the greatest saints, the Marian consecration that they made was a turning point, a major turning point. At their Marian consecration, John Paul II, Mother Teresa, St. Jose Maria, St. Louis de Montfort, St. Dominic, all of the saints. St. Augustine says, every saint that is in heaven was made a saint by the hands of the Mother of God. So when we give our life totally to the Virgin Mary in Marian consecration, and if we do it well, from that moment forward, your life is no longer your own. It's like a second baptism. At baptism, we give our life to Jesus, and we fall, and we fall, and we fall. With Mary, we say, Blessed Mother, I can't do this by myself. I need help. And so in this talk, we're going to do a lot of things because a lot of people make their Marian consecration. But most people don't live it. Most people don't live it. And we'll discuss what living it looks like. So we're going to discuss what is Marian consecration? How do I really, really live total consecration? How can I spread total consecration to others? At the end, I'm going to tell you about a consecration that God willing, we will all do together beginning January the 9th and ending on February the 11th. If you think that you can get anybody else to do their Marian consecration with us, all of us and everybody on the internet, on January 9th, take as many books as you want. As many books that are there, they're free. But they're not free. I paid for them with my own money. Boo-hoo. <laughs> you know why? Because I want to win. I'm tired of losing. And I know what's going to happen. When you go all in and after you do this Marian consecration for yourself and you live it well and you give your whole heart, mind, and soul 100% to Jesus through Mary, I give you my word, you're going to be buying books for hundreds of people, for every person that you know. And you're going to be doing everything possible to save as many souls as possible. If you do your Marian consecration and if you do it well, I personally believe that you will save the soul of every single person in your family. I personally believe that you'll save a thousand souls, more than that, if you simply give your life wholly and undeniably completely over to the Virgin Mary. We're going to talk about what that looks like, but before I can do that, this is really about Jesus and Jesus's mission. Our Marian consecration has to be rooted in Jesus Christ because the devil who doesn't want us to love the Virgin Mary, and maybe he's already whispered in many of your hearts, why aren't I not doing all of this totus to us for Jesus? How much time should I be talking to Jesus? So you have to grasp this. Marian consecration, total consecration, is rooted in the goal of Jesus Christ. The role of Jesus is to make me like God, is to, to divinize me, so that it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Every promise that he made in the Gospels was as if he was going to live. He told the apostles, you will do greater things in my name. How can you do greater things than Jesus? He told the apostles, I've come to set the world on fire. He told the apostles, you will eat poison. You will cast out demons. You will heal the sick. This is how they will know that you are my disciples. All things that we cannot do, but that God can do if and only if I do his will, and we are united. This is the paradox of Christianity. If you wish to become my disciple, you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross and follow me. He who wishes to save his life must lose it. The life of Christ is one of a complete turning away from sin, turning away from the devil, and following Jesus in a radical way. But most people use Christianity as a band-aid for their ouchies, and they're not really 
giving their life fully over to God, seeking what is God's will for my life every single day, every single hour. So when we do God's will, we have to grasp this. God's will for my life, my holiness, my theosis, this is so important, this word theosis, it's at the heart of why Maximilian Kolbe's consecration is the best and is what John Paul II said is the prophet for the new millennium is because we should be desiring theosis where we become like God. So if you make your only desire in life to do God's will, no matter how hard it is, no matter how unpopular it is, even if you're the only one following this path, if you do that, God's will, specifically and individually for your life, different from every single person, if you do that, one, you will have peace in your soul. So if you do your marrying consecration, totally, I give you my word, you will have peace beyond all understanding. I have friends who are in the worst circumstances, terrible situations. They give their life over to Mary and they're doing God's will. Their heart is oozing with peace that they've never experienced before. Only after they said, yes, Lord, I'll follow you to the cross. So you'll have peace that surpasses understanding if you do your Marian consecration. Another thing that will, you will have is it will make you extraordinarily holy. When I go to pray at the mass and I offer Jesus the crucifixion, one of the greatest things you can offer to the Lord is the sacrifice of the mass for somebody's conversion or for somebody's salvation. That's great, meritorious. But when I leave the mass, it's over. But when I go to work or when I go home and I say, Lord, what is your will? And he says, clean your room. And I say, yes, Lord. And I clean my room with great love. Now the sacrifice continues in me. And the very act of picking up socks from the ground is the flow of grace flowing through me. And because I am doing God's will, it is as if the very hand of God was blessing and commissioning and making the cleaning of my, my room meritorious. Teresa of Avila said, if you simply do God's will for your life and be the person that God created you to be, you will save 1,000 souls simply from the grace, not from preaching, not from evangelizing, simply from the grace of dying to yourself and doing God's will. If you do Marian consecration and live it and you do Mary's will, you will have maximum grace, as much grace as possible, and you will do everything as good as possible, and your tainted self-interest, because we always taint things with self-interest, Mary cuts off those self-interests and offers them to God the Father, pure and undefiled. So you'll be holy, you'll be happy, you'll save souls, and God will provide for all of your needs. One of the things that the Lord was emphasizing a lot in the Gospels was if you ask I will give. If you put me first, I'll take care of everything else. You need food? How much more would I give a loaf of bread? I'm not a good father than a father who'll give their kid a stone. God will provide. The hand of divine providence will be with you everywhere you go if you do God's will. These are all conditional upon taking upon yourself the life of Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you from my own experience, I know this stuff. I know that if I just did God's will, I would be happy. I know that if I just did God's will, I would be holy. I would save a lot of souls. And I don't do God's will. I don't, me personally, this guy right here standing with a microphone. But when I gave my life to the Virgin Mary, she made it easier. She made it sweeter. She made it faster. But we need to first be convinced that Marian consecration is 100% Christocentric. So my goal in life is to become another Christ. Mary's job is to make me into Christ. So when I said that every saint, according to St. Augustine, doctor of the church, every saint was made a saint by the hands of the mother of God in the womb of the Virgin Mary, it's because if you're a saint, if you're in heaven, you're a member of the body of Christ and it's her job to form the body of Christ. Think about our Lord in the womb of the Virgin Mary. At the moment of the conception of our Lord, this divine miracle happens at the Annunciation. He's got nothing of himself, his flesh, his blood, all of it. Just think about how small a human embryo is and growing and growing, 100% dependent upon the Virgin Mary. He depends upon her blood. He depends upon her flesh. What she eats, he eats. His heart beats with Mary when he's born. He's 100% dependent upon the Virgin Mary. 
She gives him milk. She comforts him. She soothes him. She holds him. This is what it means to be a Christian. Spiritually, when we give our lives to the Virgin Mary, she nourishes us. She protects us. She clothes us. And I love to meditate upon the flight of Jesus into Egypt. The, the baby, the, the man, the God, his life was threatened. He had to leave his home. But do you think he had any worries or cares? He wasn't worried about it. That boy was completely content. He was sucking at the breast of the Virgin Mary. She had him so bundled and swaddled and safe. He had no fear in the world. When you consecrate yourself totally, holy, and you give yourself to the Virgin Mary without reserve, you can be walking through the gates of hell, but you can be assured that you're in the arms of the Virgin Mary. You have nothing to fear. If you're afraid, it's a lack of humility. Humility is the truth. What is the truth? The truth about me is I'm a sinner. I can't do it. What is the truth about Mary? She's practically omnipotent. She's all powerful. St. Alphonsus, doctor of the church says, she's even a little bit more than all powerful. What do you mean? This is your gay wish. So St. Alphonsus, doctor of the church, what I'm about to say, I'm quoting a doctor of the church. He said, God is omnipotent by nature. Mary is omnipotent by grace. She's omnipotent. She's all powerful as a gift. Grace is a gift. And then St. Alphonsus pushes the envelope and he says, but Mary, not only is she all powerful over nature, she's also all powerful over the heart of God. She can get God to do what she wants him to do. Now, I know we're not Protestants, but I'll go ahead and quote it from the Bible. Who is the first person totally consecrated to Mary? Jesus. Who is the second person totally consecrated to Mary? Saint Joseph. He's the first person to say, totus tuus Maria, I'm gonna serve God by serving you. Who is the third person to be totally consecrated to the Virgin Mary? St. John the Apostle. At the wedding feast at Cana, John says, the mother of Jesus was there. And Jesus was also there. Dang, bro. Don't you think you should say Jesus was there and the mother of Jesus was also there? No, he said, the mother of Jesus was there to point out to us that this is about Mary. It's not my hour. And yet, Jesus worked his first miracle. We have from scripture, the omnipotence of God being overruled by his mother. But you have to remember, it is the will of God the Father. So it is God's very will that you have Mary as your mother. So Jesus came here to make me into another Christ, to give me Holy Communion, to give me confession. At the cross, he says the very last thing necessary to make you in me. And you have to grasp this. He says it to you, behold your mother. And from that moment forward, he took her into his home. Grasp this. This is the very will of God that Mary is your mother. In the book of Genesis and in the book of Revelation, John parallels again and he says what? The dragon goes off to make war against the woman and her offspring. The book of Genesis, there will be enmity between you and the woman. From the beginning to the end, if we're going to make it, and this is the reason why we don't make it, there's a war between the devil and Mary. St. Maximilian Colby says, the Immaculata alone has the promise from God to crush the head of the serpent. Many of us are fighting spiritual battles for our families. Many of us have family members who are addicted to drugs. We have family members who are addicted to porn. I tell people, hey, if you're not praying the rosary, if you're not dedicated to the Virgin Mary, how can you stop the devil? You can't. He's smarter than us. He never sleeps. When you have Mary, the serpent's head is crushed. We have to grasp how much Mary loves us individually because I need to consecrate myself to somebody who's gonna give themselves totally back to me. And that's what happens. When we do our total consecration, I'm gonna give Mary everything. I'm gonna give her my life. I'm gonna give her every part of me, the good and the bad, my merits and my sins, I'm gonna give to her. And she's gonna give herself totally and fully and completely back to me. You have to believe that. Do you feel like Mary doesn't love you enough? Love her more. Do you feel like she's not doing enough for you? Trust her more. How much does she love you? We, we like to say, 
Jesus would have died on the cross for just one of you. When we're trying to talk to teenagers, I'm a youth minister. We say, our Lord loves you so much, he would have went to the cross just for you if you were the only person who ever lived. And that's true. It's true. It's not made up. It's very true. But Our Lady would have sacrificed her son just for you. And in her mind and in her heart, you're the only person that matters. So why don't you want to give your life back to her? She only wants to make you like Christ. Surrender everything. She's your mother and she loves you. St. Alphonse says, because she is your mother, she cannot do anything but be perfect and fully attentive to you. That means that she's always watching you. She never takes her eyes off of you. Everything that happens to you, she knows it. She feels it. She hears it. Surrender. Surrender your heart to her. She, she wants to help you, but she can't. She can't help you unless you ask for it. You have to ask for it. You have to beg. St. Bernard, doctor of the church said, call upon the name of Mary. Are you troubled? Are you worried? Are you stressed? Are you anxious? Call upon the name of Mary and don't stop calling upon the name of Mary because never was it known that anybody who called upon her name will ever be left unaided. If she's not helping you, it's because you've stopped calling upon her. Stop feeling bad for yourself. Button up, get strong, call on her and say, I'm not going to stop calling on you. I'm going to be the first person to ever be failed by you. I'm, I've had this conversation with her like every day of my life. Every day I'm like, blessed mother, I need you, please. I'm dying, help me. And every single day, she does it. Time after time. So why do we quit? Why do we leave her side? It gives me a headache always to think of Mary. Suck it up. Is that it? Okay, I'm sorry. Is that the cross you're carrying? Come on, my brothers and sisters. This is an easy war to win. We just have to surrender fully and totally to her. So aspect number one, Mary is my mother. Do you believe she's your mother? Yes, nod with me. I believe she's my mother. Do you believe that she loves me with the love that she has for Jesus Christ? Yes. Okay. There's two things that have to be made aware about our total consecration that we're going to talk about how to live it. Because she's my mother, she's present. She's here. Present. Always. Always watching me. To live total consecration, we'll discuss this later, but I want you to be aware. Calling to mind that Mary's present. Just making an act of faith. Mary, I believe you're present. That changes things. Two, for total consecration. In order to be a good son, I have to do her will. I've got to do Mary's will. If I don't do what my mother asks me, I'm not a good son. I'm trying, I'm trying my best. So part of marrying consecration is on a daily basis. This is why I say people don't live it. Because one day on the March 25th or February 11th or whenever I make my consecration, I get on my knees and I say, Mary, I give you my life. And then I kind of step away. But every other day after that, I don't. So in order for me to be a good son and for her to be a good mother to me, I've got to do her will. I've got to do her will. Second thing we have to remember, Mary is the mediatrix of every grace. I'm going to say something that's going to freak people out, but I'm going to say it anyways. Not y'all, because y'all are thoroughly strong Catholics. Without Mary, there is no salvation. Wah! The Protestant in you is about to twitch on the floor. How can I say without Mary, there is no salvation? Because without Mary, there's no Jesus, and without Jesus, there's no salvation. So I can say without Mary, there's no salvation. Jesus is God's gift for salvation. Jesus is grace. Anytime you get on your knees to pray, it is God who answers you. But God gives the answer to your prayer through Mary. Every prayer that you have, whether you're praying for somebody's conversion, for somebody's healing, you're praying for money, you're praying for a husband, you're praying for a wife, you're praying to lose weight, whatever you're praying for, Answered by God, distributed by the Virgin Mary. St. Bernardine says, Mary gives what she wills, to whom she wills, as often as she wills. She gets it. She gets it. 
on a regular basis. I'm going to tell you an anecdotal story. I'm not going to tell you the details of it. I will go to Jesus in like deep prayer. Like when you know like that time when you're praying and you really feel like God is like talking back to you. And I'm like, Jesus, give me this. Jesus, I need this. And he says to me, no. And I said, I need this. He's like, it's not my will. And then I, I, I swear on my life, I just, I felt the presence of God. And then I said, if I ask Mary, will you do it? It's like, I will grant a juror. And I asked her and he says, it's granted. And I'm like, I'm just talking to myself. Then I check my phone. Dang, that was fast. I just asked her like one second later, he changes his mind. Go to Mary. She has the ability and it's God's will. It's not that she has the ability to change the mind of God. It is the will of God that you have a mother who's so powerful. So she's a mediatrix of all grace. Now this is where it's gonna be very important for you to listen very carefully. One of Mary's greatest titles, and this is why our consecration that we're gonna do is gonna be the life-changing consecration for you. I know many people who've done St. Louis de Montfort consecration. Most people I know who try St. Louis de Montfort consecration fail and they never finish. I know a lot of people who have done the modern consecrations, the easy ones put out recently. I'm not going to name names. Those people who don't do those don't live it. Too lukewarm, not fervent enough. The people I know who do Maximilian Colby, spirit of consecration, they're maniacs. I only know a couple of them. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But no, they are really crazy. Why? So John Paul II called Maximilian Colby the prophet of the new millennium. When we do our consecration that we're going to discuss in a little bit, we're starting on January 9th. It's the day after Maximilian Colby's birthday, just so happens. And it's going to end on February the 11th. February the 11th is a very special day. I didn't realize how special it was until like the past two weeks. The Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes is so special. It's so special. I went, I went to Fatima, I went to Lourdes. I felt so much more the presence of God at Lourdes. Fatima is very special too. I, I'm a Fatima boy, I, I, I eat, I live Fatima. But Lourdes is so special and I didn't realize it until listening to Maximilian Colby. He spent the majority of his life asking himself this question. Who are you, O Immaculate Conception? Because at Lourdes, when Mary appeared to Bernadette, Bernadette asked, who are you? And Mary said, I am the Immaculate Conception. And when Bernadette ran and told the priest this, the priest says, no, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. She was immaculately conceived. How can she be a conception. And so Maximilian Colby was called a pneumatologist. It's a person who studies the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so important. We don't know this because we're Catholics. You guys are special, of course. The Holy Spirit is why Jesus died on the cross. Jesus says, I have to leave you so I can send you another advocate and then you will do deeds mightier than mine. And he will lead you into the truth. And he will give you the spirit of prophecy. And he will do this. And he will do that. And he will teach you how to pray. And we have a great crisis in the Catholic Church. We're losing. Bad. Like horribly, horribly bad. It's a disaster. The Catholic Church is a dumpster fire right now. But mostly it's because we lack the power of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit. So where the heck is the Holy Spirit? Maximilian Colby pondering. Who are you, O Immaculate Conception? He figured it out hours before he was taken off to Auschwitz. One of the last things he wrote was the answer to this question. God the Father loves the Son. The Son loves the Father. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. So his conception is immaculate and it's eternal. You could say he's the eternal Immaculate Conception. When Mary responds, I am the Immaculate Conception. Maximilian Colby says, you're the Holy Spirit. You're not the Holy Spirit. You're the spouse of the Holy Spirit. 
So he had a profound insight as a pneumatologist into the life of the Holy Spirit because Mary is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. When you get married to somebody else, the woman takes the name. Why? Because the two become one. What is Mary doing? She's saying, I'm the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Maximilian Colby would say, the Holy Spirit is not incarnate. He would qualify it by saying, the Holy Spirit is not incarnate. But when you look at the Virgin Mary, it's as if the Holy Spirit was incarnate. He would say, she's the quasi-incarnation of the Holy Spirit. That the Virgin Mary was so perfectly united to the will of God that it was as if the two were one. They're two different people. They're two different wills, but their wills were so perfectly united. And so the more you become Marian, the more you resemble Mary, the more you imitate Mary, the more you call upon Mary, the more time you spend with Mary, the more the Holy Spirit's going to become alive in you. She's the perfect apostle. She's the perfect disciple. She's the perfect mother. When I give my life to the Virgin Mary and I become like Mary, I have Holy Spirit power to the maximum. And she ensures that the devil doesn't get in the way. Her goal at the end of this process is to make me look as much like Jesus Christ as possible. So Maximilian Colby, I love this guy, he made an equation to explain our holiness, the life of the Holy Spirit, the immaculate conception, our role in Marian consecration. He gave this to some seminarians in Rome. On the chalkboard, he wrote a capital W plus a lowercase w equals S, equals sanctity. Marian consecration, holiness is very simple. The capital W is God's will. The lowercase w is my will. The plus sign is the cross. If I simply sacrifice my will to do God's will, that equals perfect holiness. This is holiness. And this is Mary. Mary did God's will perfectly. So we're going to change the equation. This is Mary's will. This is my will. And if I simply do her will, I will do God's will to the best, most efficacious way. So one of the problems that Catholics have is that we have a lot of qualifiers and we're scared. We're scared of Protestants. We're scared of looking like we love the Virgin Mary too much. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. When we say total consecration, we're like, we're going to consecrate ourselves to Jesus through Mary. We always throw that out there so that people don't think that we're idolaters. How about let's not do that anymore? How about let's own it? Let's do that. Let's not be afraid anymore. So what I have the habit of doing and what I encourage you to do is to say, Mary's will be done. I'm here to do Mary's will. Whatever you want, mother. And then when people ask you, you can say, well, Mary's will is God's will. She did God's will perfectly. And you can explain it to them. Why should I do Mary's will? Because if I do Mary's will, I'll do God's will without messing it up. I'll have greater peace of soul because I actually did God's will. If I do Mary's will, I will be as holy as possible. I'll be as happy as possible. Wonders will be worked in my presence. I will hear the voice of God more clearly. My family, my family, when you give your life to the Virgin Mary, this is so great. When you give your life to the Virgin Mary, your problems become her problems. Your family members become her family members. When I gave my life to the Virgin Mary, nobody in my family went to church. Not a single one. They've been away from the church 20, 30, 40 years. When I gave my life to the Virgin Mary, one by one, they began to become raving lunatic Catholics. My mom is the greatest of all of them. She prays more prayers and does more novenas and hands out more booklets than any other person I know. And she's given her life to the Virgin Mary. And I have witnessed conversion after conversion after conversion in her family and friends. It's true. It's a miracle. And she's like, you need to talk. I was like, no, you're the evangelist. You talk to him. When you give your life to the Virgin Mary, your children, your spouses, 
your problems become her problems. And she takes care of all of them to the degree that you die. Death is an indispensable part of the equation, spiritual death. Without death, there is no life. But I give you my word, it's an easy death. Our Lady consoles us so much. Does the cross disappear? No. You're going to have the cross. But she makes it easier. When you take that cross, you embrace your cross, you embrace your depression, you embrace your bad circumstance. You say, Mary, I'll do it with you because I see your hand in it and I love you. And she will show you her hand and she will show you her face every step of the way if you just do her will. That is an indispensable part of Marian consecration. You might not be there now. So when you do your total consecration, you're gonna pick, we're gonna pick a date, February the 11th. We're gonna get on our knees. We're gonna go to mass. We'll go to confession. We're gonna say, blessed mother, I give you my life. I surrender all to you. I can't do it. Please give me the grace so that I can become a saint and a great saint. I give you everything, blessed mother. I pour my heart out to her. That's day one. Total consecration really begins day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, until you die. Why do we have 33 days of preparation? Truly tonight, you could say, I'm gonna give my life to the Virgin Mary. What that guy was saying was true. Why do I need to wait 33 days? Amen. Don't wait 33 days. Give your life to her right now. Tonight, tomorrow, at lunch, at second lunch, do it. But 33 days to be intentional to think about all of the aspects of it. Now, St. Louis de Montfort got me started. I want to be very clear. I love St. Louis de Montfort. One of my favorite books is in my backpack that's in the back. It's called The Secret of Mary. If you're new to Marian consecration and you want to get started, The Secret of Mary is this thick. It's like this tall. It's 52 pages, and this, the font is big, and the spacing is generous, and the margins are wide. It's my favorite type of book. You could read it in 20 minutes. I love it. I love it. It's so precise. He's so cold-blooded. He says the secret of Mary is so powerful that you better get on your knees and beg God for the grace, because if you read this without the grace, you're just going to damn yourself further. I like that. I like that. I like that. That's very cool. I can't start my talks like that, but I like that you did. And St. Louis de Montfort used the analogy of slavery. You become the slave of Mary. So Maximilian Colby says, yes. You want to be her slave? Yes. You want to be her property? Yes. You want to be her possession? Yes. And he would go even further. He says, I want you to be like a drug addict. Drug addicts will do anything for drugs. All they think about is their drug. I want you to just be going everywhere. Fiending for Mary, 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 Mary. Just like a person is possessed by a demon, I want you to be possessed by the Virgin Mary. I want you to be obsessed with her. I want you to have her as your fixed ideal. I want you to always have her in her mind. I'm gonna read you three quotes from St. Maximilian Kolbe. And this is why I love this man. When I read this, I say, yes, more, more. This is what Maximilian Kolbe has to say about Louis de Montfort. Servant, slave, son, possession, property, but we desire even more. We want to be hers without any limitation, including all these meanings and any other meaning that shall be invented or which can still be invented. I want it all. We are hers, unlimitedly hers, perfectly hers. We are, as it were, her very self. We want to belong to the Immaculate to the point that not only nothing may remain in us that is not of her, but that we may become annihilated, as it were, in her, changed in her, transubstantiated in her, that she herself may remain. This guy's a lunatic. I love it. You love it too. Don't you just want to love the Virgin Mary and not stress about loving her too much? You can't love her too much because Jesus is love itself and he did not love her too much. I want you to become obsessed with Mary. I want people to look at you and say, you're that Mary freak. And you say, oh yeah, I love that woman. I can't get enough of her. Maximilian Colby said, I want to be transubstantiated into the Immaculata. I don't want 
to be alive. You might see a bald man with sick glasses and a long beard, but really only Mary's alive in me. One more quote from Maximilian Colby. She alone must instruct each of us in every instant. She must direct us, transform us into herself in such a wise that it is no longer we who live, but she in us, just as Jesus lives in her and the Father and the Son. Let us grant her permission to do in us and by means of us whatever she desires, and surely she will accomplish miracles of grace. We will become saints and great saints. And you know what he did? He became one of the greatest dang saints in the history of the Catholic Church. The more you love Mary, the more you become like her. So we're going to talk about right now, how do I live Mary in consecration? I'm going to give you two steps. It's very simple. So many of you, I think, probably saw the video I did on mental prayer. Teresa of Avila, doctor of the church, said mental prayer is the foundation for every higher form of prayer. The, one of the greatest blessings in that you need to ask for, you need to beg for, beg for this grace, beg for the gift of the presence of Mary. Beg for the gift of the presence of Mary. She will grant it. She will grant it to anybody. You don't have to be a saint. What am I asking for? The gift of the presence of Mary, that you have a sense that Mary's present with you always. You only get it, one, if you act as if it 100% depended upon you. So you're constantly trying to call her to mind. You're constantly talking to her. St. Maximilian Colby would say, you have to have a constant, continual, and familiar conversation with her, just talking to her like she's your mom. Blessed Mother, tell her how you feel. I'm agitated, I'm angry, I'm depressed, I'm lonely, I don't know what to do, I'm confused. Tell her your, your desolations. So a continual conversation with her. I need a parking spot. What should I cook for dinner? Just talking to her throughout the day. So acting as if it all depended upon you and then begging, beg, beg, beg at every Holy Communion. Blessed Mother, give me your presence. At every Rosary, Blessed Mother, give me your presence. Blessed Mother, give me your presence. So act as if it all depends on you and pray as if it all depends on prayer. It all depends on prayer, and it all depends on your action. So step number one to living total consecration is very simple. Make an act of faith in the presence of Mary. You're not going to talk to her if she's not present. You don't have to talk to her to make an act of faith in her presence. In your mind, simply imagine her eyes. You can do it right now. Close your eyes. Just imagine the eyes of the Virgin Mary looking at you. Pause. Open your eyes. Was that hard? No. Was that fake? No. It's not fake. You might be using it in your imagination. The, the eyes you imagine, maybe they were blue, maybe they were brown, maybe they were green, maybe they were like the woman you loved in high school. I don't know. But she's really looking at you. So by you using your imagination, it helps your intellect to grasp a truth. It only takes a second. When you imagine the eyes of the Virgin Mary, your heart is filled with peace. At least mine is. When you imagine the eyes of the Virgin Mary and you just pause, and you, because what happens is you imagine your, her eyes, then you imagine her face, and then what happens? She talks to you. She talks to you. But how do I know if I'm imagining it? One, you are. But that doesn't mean it's not true. How do I know if it's true? What's going on in your heart? We've all been there where we've had psychotic moments where we're in desolation and we're got, God, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. I trust in you, Jesus. I trust in you. And we're saying it and saying it and saying it and saying it. And that's us. But when you close your eyes and you listen to the voice of the Virgin Mary, you feel it in your heart. Feel it in your heart. And all the voices in my head cannot make up that feeling of peace that floods my body. When you're at work, let's say you're a doctor. You can't be like, Virgin Mary, let me take your blood pressure. Let me take... <laughs> you can't. But before you go into the room, step number one, 
before you go into the room, pause. It's called recollect yourself. Even if you're, you're anxious, you're on medication, you're feeling jittery, you don't have to feel it for it to be true. Mary, I believe you're here. Go into the room. It took you five seconds to become a saint. The difference between becoming a saint doctor and not being a saint doctor or Burger King worker or mechanic, the difference is pausing for five seconds and saying, Mary, I believe you're here. That's step number one, to live in consecration. Try to keep Mary with you at all times. Why? Because she's with you at all times. And when she has her eyes on you and you have your eyes on her, life changes. Step number two, you got to do her will with love as a sign of your love for her. So let's take the example of the auto mechanic or the guy who works at Discount Tire. Sees a customer coming up, he's got five to 10 seconds before he has to talk to the customer. Blessed Mother be with me, I'll do this out of love for you. That's all it takes, come on, it's too hard. Stop, stop making excuses, I'm tired of it. Stop making excuses, God is tired of it. It's a small cross, baby, it's a small cross. You can do this, folks, tonight. I want you to do this before you get in the car. Blessed Mother, out of love for you. We're gonna drive this bad boy. This is your car now. I just gave it over to you. Total consecration. This is your car. These are your kids in the back seat. These are your groceries I'm buying. These are your teeth I'm brushing. Everything becomes meaningful. Do you understand how many souls you're gonna save if you just went home from here to the time you went to bed? If you just did everything out of love for Mary, you drove your car, I love you. I'm brushing my teeth, I love you. I'm uh, picking my, I don't know what women do, but they do things with their eyebrows and the strings. I'm not sure, but you're like doing this with your eyebrows. Blessed mother, I love you. You're gonna have the best eyebrows. And then I, I wear nasal strips at night, the breathe right strips. Oh, blessed mother, I'm letting your nostrils breathe so good tonight. Setting my alarm for 5.45 a.m. because I love you. It sounds funny and it is funny, but do you know how holy you are? If you had only 10 minutes to live and you lived that way, totally and unreservedly given over to God, you'd be a saint. I don't know that you would go to purgatory. How could you? You're like the Virgin Mary incarnate. It sounds funny, but if, imagine at one, how happy you would be, how much peace you would have. Even if you got into a car accident, you'd be like, it's not my car. I know you're gonna bring good out of this. It just changes everything. Total consecration, is the only way to true happiness because it is God's greatest plan for you. It is the sweetest path, the path of Mary. So how do I know Mary's will? So you know Mary's will because of your state in life. But I'm telling you, God wants to do something special with you people. I really believe it. You're here and nobody else is. It's for a reason. You're not here on accident. God has chosen you. And so he has special callings on your life. How do you hear that? The theological term is called consultation. Consult with Mary. About what? About everything. We have to pause and be open because think about this. They say that the recipe for insanity is to do the same thing over and over and over again and expect a different result. There's a great financial Planner, Gordon Ramsay. Oh, wait. That's the guy who cooks. That's the cook. <laughs> Wrong guy. He cooks and he curses. <laughs> Dave Ramsey. Say your life was so messed up because you made a bunch of bad financial decisions. And Dave Ramsey, the greatest financial planner, is coming over to help you be debt free. You think he's going to have you do same old, same old? No, you're going to expect some major changes in your life. Same with the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary doesn't want to just overhaul your finances. She wants to overhaul your entire messy life. And so that means doing things differently. But how are you going to do things differently if you don't listen? So you have to have times throughout the day of consultation with Mary. Consultation is putting the idea before the Virgin Mary 
let go, pray at the decade of the rosary. By the end of your decade of the rosary, usually you'll know what to do. You're not going to hear a voice. So let's say you have to make a decision. Should I do this or should I do that? Let's ask the Blessed Mother. How? Blessed Mother, what do you want me to do? Uh, I'm not feeling anything. Okay, let's pray to Hail Marys. I make all my decisions this way. All of them. And so far, the times that I did that, she hasn't failed. But let's say you're wrong. Let's say you did the 10 Hail Mary trick. You consulted with Mary. Let's say you're wrong. Because some of you, God's going to ask you to do extraordinary things. I have no doubt in my mind. Some of you might be called to become a priest. Some of you might be called to become a sister. And God's going to ask you to give up your entire life. Or what looks like you're giving up your entire life. You're really trading in dirt for gold. Whatever you're clinging to is dirt. What God wants to give you, baby, is diamonds. If you just do his will. But what if you're wrong? Because you went at it with a pure heart. Because you earnestly sought to do the will of God. Because of that, she will bring good and the greatest good out of your efforts. So you have nothing to fear. It's a win-win. And if you have failed like I have, like many people have failed so many times in the past, you say these words, Blessed Mother, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Please bring good out of my mistake. And even after, you will see, wow, that was a happy fault. I made a huge mistake. I really blew it. I made a huge blunder. But she really turned it around and brought some amazing stuff out of that. I'm going to give you things that work for other people on how to have a sense of the presence of Mary, how to live total consecration. Consolation, desolation. When something touches your heart and it really stands out to you, grab it, take it, cling to it, do it. If something I say or suggest is like, nah, ignore it. Some saints will say the name of Mary as often as possible. Like you're talking to a person that you love. Mary. 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 I need you, Mary. So they'll say some prayer frequently. Some people, this is me, but again, what works for me might not work for you, works for you might not work for me. In mental prayer, Teresa of Avila says, call to mind the presence of God. If you have a bad imagination, use a picture. So some saints, I'm not a saint, but I want, I want to be one, will carry pictures with them. So I have my entourage. Our Lady of Sorrows, Fulton Sheen, St. Therese, John Paul II, St. Michael, St. Joseph. I carry my saints with me. Everywhere I go, I carry a statue with me. This is my mom's because I'm a bad son. I left my mother somewhere. I don't even know where I left her. So my mom had to come and she gave me hers. If you're going to be totally consecrated to Mary, you must pray the rosary every single day. We're doing our consecration on the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes, February 11th. 18 times our Lady of Lourdes appeared with the rosary in her arm, and she would only appear when Bernadette would begin to pray the rosary, and the apparition would only last as long as the rosary lasted. If you have struggles with the rosary, that was me for a long time. I really struggled. I'll give you one quick rosary tip. Integrate your mental prayer into the rosary. As an example, let's say, for example, we're doing the fifth sorrowful mystery, the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross. Pause. Imagine in your mind Jesus being crucified as if you're really there, as if it's happening before your eyes. You're looking at his bloody feet. You're looking at that spike. How can you get a spike so big to go through two feet? Dang, that must have hurt, broken some bones. Oh my gosh. Then you look at the hands and you look at his chest and he's all cut up. And then you look at his face. So I can see some of you wincing and I'm just saying the words. Now looking at the bloody face of Christ, Ask him for what you want. Jesus, convert my husband. Jesus, what do I do? Pause. Look at his face. He might want to talk to you. Now you pray our Father and ten Hail Marys. And your rosary at that point changes. It's like a buffet of meditations every day. And then finally, the Virgin Mary wants one thing about all. You don't have to be here yet. 
She wants you to receive Holy Communion as often as possible. Our Lady wants you to become one with Christ. She wants you to visit Jesus as often as possible. You don't have to be there yet, but know that part of becoming one with Mary is satisfying her desire that you and Jesus in the Eucharist become one. So these are all things, these are what things would look like if I'm trying to really become a fanatic for the Virgin Mary. And what really, if you do it, I need you to do it. I need you to do it. Your family needs you to do it. The world needs you to do it. If just three of you would become all in fanatics, only concerning your lives with the will of Mary at all times, who knows who would be converted? People don't get converted at things like this. Sometimes they do. People are converted on the streets when they say, I'm not happy. I think I need to go to church. That came from a grace of God that somebody else earned by their suffering. The world needs you. The church is in a terrible situation. Vocations are born from grace. The church needs you to become like Mary. I need you to become like Mary. And when you do, you are going to set the world on fire. You're going to set your family on fire. You're going to set your local community on fire. So we have to strive with all of our mind, all of our heart, and all of our being to do Mary's will, no qualifiers, to do Mary's will, no matter what it is. And when you do her will, be assured, she will give you the grace to do it. She will give you the strength to do it. She's going to reward you. My goodness, is she going to reward you. She only wants you to be happy when you do this difficult thing that she wants, and then you realize that it actually benefited you all along. And she's like, I love you. Don't you believe I actually love you? I care about you. You're not drowning. You're okay. On the back of this bookmark that should be with everybody's consecration are two QR codes. The top one goes to my YouTube channel, Gabi After Hours, where we have high quality videos, etc. The bottom one goes to 33 day consecration. So we're picking this book that we're going to use. Why? Because it's short, literally takes three minutes. We're starting January the 9th. On January the 9th, I'm going to read it to you. So if you scan it, the bottom one, if you scan it right now, it will take you to the YouTube channel. It's not my normal YouTube channel. Every day, 8 p.m., a live video will be released, and I'll read it to you, and I'll give you a two-minute reminder of the theology, ideas, and tips. Very short. Total seven minutes if you wanted to listen to the entire thing. You want to cut me off. You're like, I had enough of that guy. We'll end it at the prayers. Spread Mary. The fastest way to bring somebody to Jesus Christ is through Mary. If you can get them to wear the miraculous medal, if you can get them to wear the brown scapular, that's all you have to do. The Holy Spirit will do the rest. Let us conclude with one more quote from St. Maximilian Kolbe. Do you want her to dwell securely within your soul? Do you desire her and only her to guide your thoughts and take possession of your whole heart? Do you desire to live totally for her? If you really desire all of this, then open wide the door of your whole heart before her and consecrate yourself to her without any restriction and this forever. Have you not given thought to what you will become when it is no longer you who act, but she herself who loves God and men in you and by means of you? Do you not realize that in such a case, your actions come to be measured by her dignity, that in her hands they become pure and without blemish, just as she is all pure and without blemish. Our ideal is that of unconditional consecration. Our desire is not merely that we ourselves should be consecrated to her, but that all souls all over the world will be consecrated to Mary and give themselves to her unreservedly. Let us conclude in prayer. If you're pleased, kneel down. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the great gift of your mother. Help us to love her like you loved her. Help us to see her like you see her. Help us to hear her voice like you heard her voice. Help us to praise her like you praised her. 
St. Joseph, you loved Mary and Jesus. We need your prayers. You're so powerful. We're so thankful for all the good that you're doing here at this church, but also in the wider church. And finally, Blessed Mother, we consecrate ourselves to you. We surrender all of ourselves to you, the good, the bad, the ugly. Help us to know the truth and help us to do your will. And we offer you a Hail Mary as a sign of our consecration. And you join with me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.